today's scripture is in Deuteronomy chapter 30, verses 11 up to 20. I will read in New International Version. The offer of life or death. Now, what I am commanding you today is not too difficult for you or beyond your reach. It is not up in heaven so that you have to ask who will ascend into heaven to get it and proclaim it to us so we may obey it. Nor is it beyond the sea so that you have to ask who will cross the sea to get it and proclaim it to us so we may obey it. No, the word is very near you. It is in your mouth and in your heart, so you may obey it. See, I set before you today life and prosperity, death and destruction. For I command you today to love the Lord your God, to walk in obedience to him, and to keep his commands, decrees, and laws. Then you will live and increase and the Lord your God will bless you in the land you are entering to possess. But if your heart turns away and you are not obedient, and if you are drawn away to bow down to the other, other gods and worship them, I declare you this day that you will certainly be destroyed. You will not live long in the land you enter, crossing the Jordan to enter and possess. This day, I call the heavens and the earth as witnesses against you, that I have set before you life and death, blessings and curses. Now choose life so that you and your children may live and that you may, uh, you may love the Lord your God, listen to his voice, and hold fast to him. For the Lord is your life, and he will give you many years in the land he swore to give you to your fathers, Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. This is the word of God. I give you this day. Now, you may have already heard of this saying, but I have learned to really embrace it over the last two years that today is called the present. Yesterday is known as the past. Can't change it. Can't maneuver it. You can't pour back into something. It's gone. It has passed. The future you can look to. You can hope. You can even uh, put some plans into motion. But really, you have to wait for the future to arrive. And then you call it today. You call it the present. You see, because the present is a gift of God. This is the day that the Lord has made. Rejoice and be glad in it. Now, there are two days within that today. Yes, it is today that the Lord has made and given to us. It's a gift. And how we unwrap today is how we actually are going to choose to receive this gift. I mean, I can joke around and, and talk about my mother-in-law. My mother-in-law used to love to give gifts, and uh, she was very unique about it. And she would wrap it all very nicely. We'd do the same. But so often, my mother-in-law would just look at the box, praise the size, praise the uniqueness of the wrap, even cherishing the wrapping. I remember my mother-in-law, she must have used the same wrapping for Christmas 18 years in a row. And I came from a family that it's like, rip it open, baby. <laughs> Boom! You know, because sometimes we, we get stopped at the package part. We get stopped at, at the wrapping and yet never dive into the gift that is inside, that is that gift that wants to come out and to be received. And so we have to watch each day if we're just in it for the wrapping, if we're just in it for the size of the box, or the gift that it is held in, 
That's this is the day that the Lord has made. But there's also something else in that verse. This is the day that the Lord has made. We will rejoice and be glad in it. Because it does talk a little bit about a day in the past called the day that Jesus Christ died for our sins. That is the day that the Lord has made, and he gave it to us as the gift that would keep on giving through each and every day of our existence. And so in this day, I give this day to you, I want to encourage you to treasure each day. That's one of the reasons why I, I brought my mother and father along to church today. Actually, they're usually on my neck every day. Can't say every day, you know, that fact is every so often I do lay it aside, but I'd say 99% of the time they're right there. Reason why is, especially when we look at the gift of today, when my mother was not well and she was up and down, she had glaucoma, she was legally blind, very limited. Uh, certainly uh, there were some dilemmas in her life, yes, but I can remember the day that after church we went to see my mother uh, it was shortly after uh, Christmas, and uh, she had just gotten a new room, a single room, so that was great, and life was pretty good, feeling better. And I remember going up, and I met my father on the way as he was coming down to go home, because he went directly from church, and, well, I had to eat. My dad said, don't worry, mom's sleeping, let her sleep. She's finally got a good night's sleep after being in a room that was really rambunctious uh, with a couple other uh, patients. Uh, everything's cool, and uh, just go on home your way and uh, visit another time. And I automatically listened to my mother and said, okay, and we went out and got in our cars. That night was even a night of celebration for Christmas that my family was hosting for my side of the family. We get home, and I'm just unpacking, want to get undressed, and my, my wife says to me, Jamie, go visit your mom. I said, well, you, you heard Dad. You were right there. She's finally got some sleep. She's finally getting some rest. Um, we'll, we'll go another time. Of course, you know, we have to take up, uh, you know, different visits and stuff like that. And she said, something inside here says, go visit your mom. I love my wife for this. Talk about a gift of that day. So I went, okay, so I grabbed some books and I grabbed some things I could do while I visited because I didn't want to wake her up, and, but if she woke up, I'd be there, and I did, and I came in, and, and she did. She woke, and who's there? And I said who it was, and we talked for a little bit, and everything was good. And I said, but you do look a little tired, Mom. Do you, do you need some rest? And she said, I think I do. And so she went back to sleep, and I went back to work, and I said, don't worry, I'm here. I remember she got up again because somebody in the next room dropped something and I don't know what it was, but it was, uh, well, it could have woken the dead. And she jumped and startled and we talked a little bit more and helped her with a drink of water. We talked a little bit and she went back to sleep. That was fine. Somebody else came to visit and when they heard us talking, she awoke. She knew them. She called them by name because she heard her voice. Had a lovely little visit. But they too said, you look a little tired, Kay. She said, you know I am. They exited, she went to sleep, everything was good. I waited to the end of it, and then I decided not to wake her up, but I had to depart because we were hosting this meal. We got a call within four hours. She's taken a turn. And by midnight that night, she woke up to heaven with full eyes and a wonderful being. That day, if I didn't listen to my wife saying, I just have a thought. I just have a feeling. I would have missed the opportunity to give my mom a couple of drinks, a couple of reassurances, and even the thought, I'm here. Because she did not have a tomorrow. Likewise with my father. My father, who I used to have to uh, get a golf date three or four weeks in advance just to fit into his schedule, uh, he was up and around and doing those things that he always did as a retired person, having a good life with a few tests along the way. Not saying he was the healthiest person, but he could still play golf and he could still hang out and he still had busy days. But one day he did go to sleep, and without any notice, the walked into his bedroom because they lived next door to each other. And my dad was still sleeping as comfortable as I'll get out. 
His big foot and toe was outside of the blankets. He was curled up on that pillow. And he was in the presence of God. No warning. Just at peace, he passed away. We start to treasure this day because we're not guaranteed tomorrow. In fact, either are you guaranteed. Because a lot of this message is based on a minister from Michigan who talked about the fact that he had three prayers that he chose to live each day of his life. Because for this pastor in Michigan, I had a chance to meet him, was diagnosed with Lou Gehrig's disease, ALS. Do you know how hard that is for a pastor? Because what's the first thing to go? Speech. The instrument that a pastor uses. And he realized that with that diagnosis, he didn't know the day, or the minute, or the moment where his instrument would be stilled in his calling for God. So in this, and in the fact that with my parents in that transition, to me, very quickly, to say to you, you may be healthy, you may be struggling, but today is the day that God has given to you, and you're really not promised tomorrow. So make the most of the gift that God has given you in today, in the people you come in contact with, in the service you have to be involved in, in the devotion you have in your devotional life. And so this gentleman came up with his first prayer. God, give me grace to accept this, which he was talking about situations situations opportunities people that come our way family and friends surprise meetings maybe even a health call or warning when he started praying this prayer he realized like paul who prayed for the thorn to be removed three times but what did god say to him my grace is sufficient for your situation you know if you like to see a rainbow and i do what do you have to do? You have to go through the storm. And by going through the storm, amidst the storm, is the beautiful reminder that God is with you. And he will not destroy you, regardless of what befalls you. Because we're not here to stay forever. And so with granting us grace to accept each situation, maybe a problem at work, maybe family situations, God give me the grace to accept and work within the situation today. And he does that by literally giving you a choice this day that you heard in Scripture. And so I put it in that, that little offering plate there that says, you have a choice to, as you offer this day to God. You can either have life and prosperity, and believe me, prosperity is not always financial. I don't think the apostles had financial stability. Even the Son of God didn't have a place to place his head. But we do know that they counted their blessings one by one. We need to as well. Not always putting a dollar sign on the prosperity side. Life and prosperity or death and destruction. See, that's the two choices God gives you. You can either choose life and the blessings that I desire to give to you as a heavenly father, the opportunities, the ups and downs, even the refiner's fire. Remember Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego? Nevertheless, God can choose to save us or take us away, but we're not going to bow down. They understood what life in Christ or life in God meant. And they made that choice today. Hey, if God chooses to take me out, we're in His glory. But if He doesn't, then we're going to continue to do what we're going to do. And if that meant death, then that meant death. But sometimes we choose death by not daring to open up the gift of today, the gift of maybe bad news health-wise, or the gift of walking through the valley of the shadow of conflict. We just allow death to paralyze us from living. And although our heart's beating, our feet are moving, our spirit is paralyzed. So this gentleman uh, said because of that then, he said, help me now then to preach as a dying man to a dying people. In other words, let me keep going till I can go no more. But you know what? If you know you're dying, everything is precious. Every goodbye, every embrace, every I love you. Or 
hey, I don't know if you know the Lord, but I want you to know the Lord, and I'm not going to take a chance that somebody else is coming behind me to tell you about the Lord. I'm going to take this opportunity to tell you about the Lord, because even though my human body is dying, the spiritual body will live forever, and so I preach to a dying people as a dying man. But then he goes on to say, that prayer has principle. And the principle that we need to have, pray that prayer for grace to sustain us. Whatever befalls this day is help us to keep focus on God. I will never leave you nor forsake you, but be an ever-present help in times of problems, troubles. We embrace or unwrap the different promises in the book. Our promises that God has given to us, when we embrace them, when we unwrap them, and when we claim them, then we can even walk through the valley of the shadow of death and fear no evil. That's the principle. But we have to keep focus on that. We have a chance of walking in the footprints of Jesus. But I still love that one poem that said, the footprints in the sand. There's only one set of footprints. I was carrying you. God will never leave you nor forsake you, even amidst what befalls your life. And principle number three says, one day at a time. You know, that's why I love the Bible when it says, tomorrow has enough troubles on your, of itself. Why are you adding to it today? Do you know if you add tomorrow's problems today, you have nullified this day because you're so much in tomorrow that you end up not seeing what God had right in front of your face? Just like I didn't have what was before my face that day if it wasn't for my wife that said, go talk to your mom. And I was the last. And I will cherish that forever, taking one day at a time. Then he goes into prayer number two. When you look at that whole concept and go home today and reread Deuteronomy and reread this thing after you hear these points, don't forget to recheck the points on YouTube so that you can once again work through this, so that you will better embrace each day in the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. It led this guy to pray prayer number two. Give me wisdom to know what to do. You know, in the letter of James, it says, if you lack wisdom, ask God, and he will grant it to you in abundance without finding fault. It will be given to you. But it also goes in to say, but when you ask for it, don't doubt. Because if you doubt, you're double-minded. You're like a wave blown here and there and everywhere. If you ask God for wisdom, believe he will grant wisdom, elude, uh, give you a sustenance in wisdom, that you will have scriptures be retained at the time of calling it. It says God will give you wisdom on how to handle each and every day. Ask God. And he says in that, later on in that uh, particular uh, chapter of James, it says you don't ask properly. You don't get it because you don't ask properly. You ask with your own catches. What's in it for me? What was in it for Jesus to die on the cross? All of our hearts. Not once did he say, hey, Father, if I have to do this, what more is it to me? No, it was just good enough for him to be the sacrifice for you and I. He claimed the same passion and power that the Father had in you and I. And if he says, then I'll drink ye all of it, even unto death. Prayer number two says, ask God to grant you wisdom. In every conversation, every opportunity, every time, call out to him. Because when we get back to the offering plate, know this, that what to know, or sorry, to know what to do physically, because remember, this gentleman had ALS. His physical abilities were going to become less and less. So what he says, if, if I only had limited strength, Father, help me to know where to put my physical side of my offering to you. But Father, help me to know what to do spiritually. You see, sometimes it's not all about the physical. It's about the spiritual. Dropping to our knees and praying to God. Dropping to our knees and praying to the Holy Spirit to intervene, to pierce the heart of the one beside you, 
to encourage the one beside you, to pray for somebody more than yourself. You see, we are living sacrifices, and we are to be holy and pleasing to Him. It is our offering, our act of worship. And there is a physical side to our worship. That means show up. That means physically get into a house of God and worship Him. Physically singing forth, even if it's a joyful noise. Playing with all your heart. Welcoming one another and teaching. Whatever those gifts or abilities are. That's what you can do physically today and each day that God grants you as you apply your gift to make the world around you a godly place, a holy place, a righteous place. But then also to know that spiritually is like a gas tank. You just can't keep withdrawing without filling up. Daily devotions, prayer, scripture reading, journaling. Read Psalms. Do you know that that is uh, David's way of singing praise? Writing poetry and journaling. By the way, journaling is a guy's way of, way of saying diary. But dear diary just sounds just too feminine for us, so we, we're, we're journaling. <laughs> journaling or diary, I don't care. But why don't you start writing your own psalm starting today? Starting today. Each day you can write psalms. You are the present day David. Sing your songs, write your lyrics even if there's no music except in your head. Write your laments, your valleys, your struggles. Give it to God. Write your journaling on how He saw you through this day and give thanks. Because prayer number three says, God, give me faith to believe you can do this. That even though I'm going through this situation, you can be brought glory. That the way I handle each day will be a monument, an altar for people who come behind me. And in doing so, we see that our signal has been lost. <laughs> that all we need to do is get lost in the wonder of it all. In the wonder of it all. I said this, I don't know if it was in the sanctuary here or at Bible study. But Ray Bolts wrote a song called Thank You. It was about a Sunday school teacher who had an impact, a person who gave to missions and somebody across the world through that financial gift for, through a missionary brought the word of God and all the different things. It's a beautiful song of people who have come to Christ that you do not even know that you've had an impact on. It's happened to me. I had a young man say, come to my wedding. I thought that was nice. I was his youth pastor. He said, because you're in my speech. I said, oh, really? I went to the wedding. I went to the reception. And he was talking about, I could not remember that day. I could not remember that advice I had given him. I had not remember what even he was going through. But you know what? That didn't matter. What he said is, because of what you said on that day, here's the course of life I put myself on. And I thought, wow. You may have had that same experience, and you may not have the, the gift of knowing it this side of heaven, but you will. Get lost in the fact that God is working in and through you despite you. And what he brings is honor and glory through you embracing the best of today as an ambassador for him, shining even in the midst of darkness, moving despite dilemma or disability. Believing and trusting when, humanly speaking, it's a ridiculous way of thinking. Because greater is he, is he that is in you than is of the world. And he brings about that to the fourth, and I believe the final prayer. God, give me the courage to be thankful. Thankful. You see, because one of the things that this man was taking for granted is his ability to speak. He was taking it for granted by the time when he spoke to me when I was at the conference with him. He said, I took for granted I was doing it so long, it was a no-brainer. Then I realized that I had been not, I had taken for granted the gift God has given to me. Not just speaking, but speaking each day. Making a deliberate choice to speak on behalf of his Lord and Savior. Taking the privilege to be part of somebody's life, even if it was just a moment. 
He said, grant me the courage and the thankfulness each day, each moment, and each opportunity. Because that is called humility. And so 1 Thessalonians chapter 5 says, Rejoice always, pray continually, give thanks in all circumstances, for the Lord is, uh, sorry, for this is God's will for you in Christ Jesus. See, it didn't say be thankful for the disease. Don't be thankful for the pain in your side. Don't be thankful that it's befallen you. Be thankful to the Lord that he will see you through it. Pray continually to be strengthened through it and to continue to give thanks because God has chosen you and nothing he will give you can overtake you. That God will only give you what you can endure. And so as we get to our conclusion here, you have today. The day is before you. How are you going to unwrap it? How are you going to embrace it how are you going to receive it as a gift from god and then through that gift put it on because i don't know how many times my grandmother would buy me a sweater do we just leave that sweater in the box those socks in the box no we put it on and we say this was from grandma this was from my wife this was from my son. I still remember my very first, Dolores here, Father's Day tie. It was made out of paper with stickers. Some of them missed the tie. But that Sunday morning, I was the proudest father in the sanctuary. A pastor with a paper tie. Because it was a gift from my child. You know what? Today is a day that God has given to you. How are you going to wear it? How are you going to put it on? How is it going to dress this day for His glory? Will it be in blessing and prosperity and longevity? Will it be in a moment and a twinkling of an eye that will be treasured for all eternity? Or will you just simply choose to go numb, silent, paralyzed, waiting for your last breath. That's not what God has intended for us. Live this day and make the most of it. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Let's pray. Father, it says, I set before you this day. Help us to embrace this day better than we have. Because you know what? We've been taken for granted this day because it happens every day. Help us to learn to treasure it more as a gift from you. And within the day, we will find by unwrapping it and embracing it what it will hold. Let us look for tomorrow with the hope and desires. But help us not to be so mindful about tomorrow that we forget to live today. To live and bring you glory and honor. And the power and the authority that you have given to us to exist today. Help us to be your ambassadors in the way we spend are today and father at the end of the day give us the grace and courage to be thankful for it even the amidst of the bumps of life because we know this is the day that you have given to us we will rejoice and be glad in it and offer it to you in jesus name